We are back in the year 1984, continuing our coverage of the Transformers toy line by Hasbro. Previously, we started looking at the Autobot mini cars, smaller entries into the line that provided a less expensive option to parents and kids alike. The first series had six to choose from, and so far, we've looked at two, with the Autobot Warrior Wind Charger and the construction engineer, Huffer. Four remain, including the incredibly popular Bumblebee and the lesser known Brawn. And today, we'll be taking a look at the Autobot demolitions expert, Brawn, here on Creed's Collection. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Creed's Collection. Today we're looking at the Autobot minicar Brawn from the 1984 toy line Transformers by Hasbro. Brawn is strong, rugged, and agile. He's also the most macho of the Autobots, and often feels sorry for those not as tough as he is. Of the Series 1 Autobots, Brawn is second strongest, capable of lifting up to 190,000 pounds, as well as being able to knock down small buildings with ease. However, even with his great strength and extreme resistance to artillery fire, Brawn is still vulnerable to attack by electromagnetic waves. And now that we know a little bit more about Brawn, let's go ahead and take a closer look. Brawn's vehicle mode is a Land Rover Series 3 4x4. He has the same rims and tires as Huffer, and the chrome on his grille has held up really well. Actually, in vehicle mode, he looks near mint. There are no scratches on him anywhere. The paint has held up wonderfully and I'm really pleased with the way he looks. His level of detail isn't overwhelming, but I do like the spare tire on the roof and the gas can on the back. And also, right next to the gas can, you can see the copyright date information. Takara, made in Japan, 1974 and 1983. And once again, these dates suggest, just like last time, that the Minibots have been around in Japan for quite some time. Now, because Braun has the same plastic tires as Huffer and Windcharger, he also has the same issue with traction. Unfortunately, the tires just don't grab very well and they don't roll very well, unless you put it on carpet. I really wish they would have included rubber tires on these guys. It would have been a big improvement. All right, now it's time to transform Braun into robot mode. He's a little bit tricky, so here we go. First thing you wanna do is fold this leg down and make sure it lines up with the door here because if not, you won't be able to pull it out like so. Now once you have that done, you want to go ahead and turn the door up like this, and then you can take the leg and rotate it down, and then you want to push it up and it locks into place. After that, right here behind the door is his arm, so you just want to grab it and pull it out, and then flip the door back. Now you just repeat the process on the other side. You want to take the leg, pull it down like so, grab the door, pop it out, and flip it up, rotate the arm out, rotate the leg down, and lock it into place. And that's it. That's Braun's transformation. Now the first thing you may notice right away about Braun, now that I have him transformed, is that his right arm is missing. And unfortunately, I broke it off when I was a kid. I'll show you a better look at that here later, but right now I just wanna focus on the fact that if you exclude that arm missing, this guy is in stellar shape. As I already said, there's virtually no paint wear, there's no scratches, even the stickers are incredibly intact. Which I find crazy, because this was one of my most played with Transformers, as he was one of my first. Now, just like Huffer, Braun actually had a different face on the cartoon. He had like a face with eyes, nose, and a mouth. But for the toy, he's got the visor and the covering over his mouth, which I prefer, because it makes him look a little more dangerous and ominous. Even though he's an Autobot, I still like it. From what I understand, the main reason why there was such a difference between some of the toys in the cartoon show is because some of the designs that were done for the cartoon weren't really based on the toy itself. Now I'll go ahead and take a look at Braun's arm. As you can see, it's kind of like a claw hand, which is so different than the cartoon where he just had normal forearms and hands. This is also where you can see the most paint wear on him as I was constantly grabbing his hand and swinging it out and swinging it back when I was transforming him. Now, I really didn't break off his whole arm as I stated before. I really just broke off his hand, which I still have to this day. I unfortunately have never figured out a way to reattach it though. I've tried different types of glue and nothing works. It just falls right back off. And because of this, I recently decided to go ahead and pick up another brawn. Well, not really. I actually got him with two other mini bots that I needed in a lot on eBay, but the price was so good, I didn't mind getting another brawn in the deal. 
The biggest difference is this is a rub brawn and my original is a pre-rub. If you want to know more about pre and post rub transformers, check out my Huffer review where I talk a little more in depth about it. All right, now I'll take a look at Braun's articulation. His arms can go up and down, and because the arm moves independently of the door, technically it can do a full 360. Now, in addition to this arm movement, his legs can kick up very high, and this is due to his transformation. But unfortunately, they don't move any further back than this. They're stuck straight. And yeah, that's it. That covers all of Braun's articulation. Now here's a look at Braun's file card. If you'd like to read it, pause now. I hope it's clear enough as I don't own this one and I had to find an image online. And now for our He-Man size comparison. Even though Braun is about half the size of He-Man, these two became fast friends as Braun admires He-Man's great strength and He-Man is surprised how much punch a little guy like Braun can pack. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my toy review for Braun from the 1984 toy line, Transformers by Hasbro. Just like Huffer, Braun is one of the first 10 Transformers I ever got, so he is super old school in my collection. I remember having difficulty transforming him as a kid, but beyond that, I love this guy, and he was a welcome addition in the fight against Megatron and the evil of the Decepticons. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up, and if you have any thoughts, please leave a comment. I love reading and responding to them. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it, and it would help my channel grow. I review a toy from my vintage collection every Wednesday, so I hope to see you next week and every week after, here on Creed's Collection.